What's going on Goonacast? Today's video looks at why Ben White was the perfect player for England's defence. How he could have fit into the team, his recent improvement at Arsenal, and how he's helped to unlock the creative potential of both Odegaard and Saka. We're not going to talk too much about the politics of why he's now unavailable for England. For whatever reason it is, the fact is he is now unavailable and only months before the Euros. At a time when England need him more than ever, White is playing the best football of his career. He's part of arguably the best defence in world football, let alone the Premier League. And so many of the players that before he was behind them in the pecking order, now those players are unavailable or unfancied. So this fallout could not have come at a worse time. England's team is incredible right now. They are absolutely top class, you could even say world class players throughout the team among the absolute favourites for the Euros. We've been performing at an elite level for years. Back-to-back -back tournaments that were very successful and we are challenging to win these competitions consistently. But if you're looking at the defence, it's not so great. Whereas previously, the midfield was also a bit of a weak link. The emergence of Rice and Bellingham have completely changed the feel of that area. In defence, we're really still waiting for an upgrade. That upgrade could have been Ben White. Where would he play? Is he in a fullback ahead of the other five top class fullbacks or centre back where he doesn't even play for his club? Farcical claim, I know. England are crying out for a centre back to partner John Stones. Look at the current options. Tomori barely ever gets a chance, no matter how well he plays for Milan. Gomez is decent, but even Liverpool don't trust him to play at centre back. Branthwaite is probably the future. We've already seen he knows how to defend at Everton and I'm sure soon he's going to be joining someone and we'll be able to see how well he can play too. Konza, he's a backup, if that. Dunk is actually class. I just think he's traumatised from all these goals that Brighton are conceding for fun. Colwill is really good. Great left foot, good balance, defends well and passes it forward nice. Chelsea need to stop playing him at left back. Gay, he is solid, dependable, but is he starting for England at World Cups? I really doubt it. And Maguire, but without jumping on the bandwagon, he just doesn't play enough football. So you can't have him in the team because he's too rusty. And even when he's not, he's still Maguire. And in first place is John Stones, the best English defender that's not named Ben White. Talking of centre backs that play high up the pitch in teams that dominate games, at loads of touches and a class on the ball is why England have missed a trick with Ben White. His position, even from fullback, is not actually that different from what you'd expect to see from a centre back. His recent success has come from inverting from the flank towards the centre. It looks like he's playing more of a midfield position, but the centre backs are getting touches like central midfielders these days anyway. These centre-backs are spending most of their time on or near the halfway line in the big teams. And the fact that he bombs forward so well and gets on the overlap of Saka should be seen as another strength to his game. Not a flaw that's going to prevent him from defending in the centre with discipline. So I think no problem him being next to John Stones, even though they are both quite similar in this ball playing centre back mould. Arteta rates White so highly that in the first few games of this season, he had Gabriel on the bench with party shoehorned in at right back just to keep White in the team. Until recently, White could have been ranked as low as fifth of the players you'd expect to see as England's right back. At the last World Cup, he went and didn't play a single minute. But that list of players ahead of him isn't as solid these days as it once was. Walker is still rightly number one, but he's 34 years old. Fair to say his attacking side is one of the weaker parts of his game. Trent isn't even considered by Southgate as a right back due to his lack of defensive abilities and the fact that he's been trying to get him into midfield recently. Reese James has been injured since the last World Cup and Trippier is single-handedly losing more games for Newcastle than he's contributing to winning. 
Meanwhile, Ben White playing every week for factually the strongest defense in the country. He's playing directly behind and in line with his England teammate, Bukayo Saka, with a level of chemistry that cannot be forged between players that only meet up and train together ahead of these big tournaments or these rare friendlies. That bond between them, threat he provides and the chemistry they've got is invaluable at the highest level. At the very least, he's the attacking option to complement the defensive prowess that we get from Kyle Walker. But for those tactical changes that we're gonna need to make against teams that will defend in the low block and we have to break them down, no one's better at right back than Ben White. He's recently been a huge part of helping not just Saka, but also Odegaard to unlock their attacking potential too. You can take a look at this article from The Athletic that explains it perfectly. Arsenal frequently use White, Odegaard and Saka to direct most of their attacks down that right flank. Odegaard and Saka's combinations in the first 12 games, compared to the most recent 12 games, showed a drastic difference. That change has come during the same period that we've seen a more adventurous, fitter, flying Ben White. His movement down the right and around Saka has opened up space for Saka to drift inside and be more dangerous, which also benefits Martin Odegaard. Now, we already looked at why and how Odegaard has dropped deeper to get more involved in the play. Those improvements were incredible. This recent Ben White is a stark contrast to the Partey experiment in the first three games of the season. This graph from the Brentford game shows the quality of passers and passes. Look how important that trio are right up in the corner of the pitch. It's not too difficult to imagine that Phil Foden taking up that Odegaard role for the England team, providing the same combinations, the chances and the creativity down the right to create the cutbacks. Unfortunately, this is all pointless and none of it is going to happen because White can't stand to be around Steve Holland and his big mouth and all these football nerds like you and me. I guess it means we'll have to win the Euros, Southgate and Holland will leave and go to Man United to be ruined by them. White comes into the England team with Saka on the right flank and then together they help us to go and win the World Cup. Remember where you heard that first. All right, Gooncast, we're done for today's video. If you want to help tell Steve Holland to shut his big mouth, then bang a thumbs up on the video and subscribe to the channel to help us win that World Cup too. Much love everyone. Don't forget to check the Erdegaard story video that looks at his story and how he became the midfielder that we wouldn't swap for any other. Big up Arsenal.